<laughs> yeah, I've heard that about you. No, that was a long time ago. <laughs> See more that way. Last week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so if we remember what we studied earlier, we chapter forty nine started off with a. Uh, the second servant song where the servant says he will basically be bringing in uh, the faraway peoples. He will be the redeemer, not only of Israel, but of other people as well. Then the rest of 49 was God reassuring his faithful ones in Israel yeah. that he, they weren't forgotten, they aren't abandoned, that he's there with them as well. And now chapter 50 is a, can, the first three verses are a continuation of that thought. And then we move into the third servant song. We will get to Genesis, I promise. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> I heard I'm it too. I'm the only one that hasn't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Rhonda's <laughs> been pretty quiet. Yeah, Rhonda's part. Oh, Rhonda's here? <laughs> yeah, she was shoveling earlier because she couldn't be bothered to tell me there was a problem. I, I lived right there and I would have fixed it for her. But Rhonda came and fixed it. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> We're supposed to get more snow today, too, aren't we? I think the east of us, isn't it? East of us, isn't it? Yeah, it was snowing for a bit this morning. Yeah, I do get turned around, so I appreciate that. <laughs> east is the front part of the church. We're talking about East is turning that way. Oh, okay. Well, East Association. So, uh, verses one to three. Let's read verses one to three first. And Rachel, since you haven't had a chance to talk yet, will you read that for us, please? Okay, I'll try. <laughs> this is what the Lord says. So where are the divorce papers of your mother, whom I sent away? To which of my creditors did I sell you? It was because of your guilt that you were sold, because of your rebellions, your mother was sent away. When I came, why was no one there? Why, when I called, was there no one who answered? Is my arm really too short to redeem? Do I not have enough power to rescue? Yes, but my by my rebuke, I can dry up the sea. I can turn rivers into a wilderness so that their fish will stink from having no water and they will die of thirst. I can clothe the heavens with blackness and I can cover them with sackcloth. Terrific, thank you. So in what way does that serve as a warning? can do whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. And he and he basically did things because of what people reject, basically rejection, I'd say. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't listen to him. I don't know if he wanted to. No, you you're you're the most specific one so far. You are exactly correct. If you look at it, but remember this section is the Lord's abandoned me. Mm -hmm. I, why are we left alone? Well, because of what you did. You've heard children look at their parents. You hate me, right? They don't normally say that for no reason. The reason they normally say that is because they're in trouble for something or other. No, well, I don't hate you. You just, uh, you done screwed up, so you're getting punished right now. And we see that play out time and time and time again in Israel. I find this section really striking because of what Jesus says in uh, Matthew chapter 5. Does anyone remember? Yeah, not the Beatitudes. Yeah, 
sort of. Yeah, Sermon on the Mount. Yes, ma'am. Which the Beatitudes are part of. Uh, I might be wrong here. I think I have the wrong reference. I have the right idea, but the wrong reference. I've been known to uh, be wrong before. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, it's not Matthew, it's the book before that, Malachi. Malachi 2.16. Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The last four have a little bit of a rhythm to them. You could dance to it. You, you guys laugh. I say that to the catechism kids and they look at me. Have you lost your mind? We're saying the same thing. No, you know I've lost my mind. <laughs> 10 through 16, really. 10 through 16? Mm hmm. Instruction from the cross. I'm talking about their idolatry, right? Yep. If you're in math, you just turn a couple punk at either. What was it again? 10 through chapter 2, 10 through 16. Okay. Now to another question. <laughs> oh, I was just saying that Isaiah 50 is really striking because Malachi talks, God talks about how much he hates divorce. It's not something he's thrilled with. It's something that he says is unacceptable to him. But then he says he was sent to what he sent away the mother. Yeah, because he really does. Because, because why? <clears throat> if you think of the relationship of Judah of Israel, to what picture is being used there? It's a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, God's saying here, you left me no choice. You cheated on me again and again and again. I had to divorce you because you had no, you made me do something I hate because you couldn't behave yourselves. It's just such an intensified way of speaking that God is using here. And it's worth not blowing past lightly. Also, the Malachi verse is uh, pretty instructive. They throw their off, they bring their offerings, and God finds them unacceptable. 
God, why? Look at your life. You're not following me. You're bringing your offering to sort of a quid pro quo type thing. I do this for you, God, so you do this for me. <laughs> Which is also in the context of Malachi, very interesting. Because in the book of Malachi, and I'm paraphrasing here, God says, bring me the offering you're supposed to bring and see if I don't bless you. But that offering has to be connected to a life of faith or else it's just emptiness. God does not reward hypocrisy. Okay. I, mean, I wouldn't try it personally. <laughs> That doesn't seem like the sort of thing that'll work out for you. I think so. Okay. Anything further on that little section? And Myron, why don't you take the crack at verse four and read for a bit? Um, the Lord God gave me a tongue like yeah, the Lord God gave me a tongue like a lamb, and an instructed tongue, so I know how to sustain the weary with uh, with a word. He wakes me up morning by morning. He wakes up my ears so that I listen like the learned. The Lord God opened my ears, and I myself was not rebellious. I did not turn back. I committed my back to those who beat me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from disgrace and from spit. The Lord God will help me. So I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have made my face hard like flint. I know that I will not be put to shame. The one who will acquit me is near. Who can accuse me? Let us take our stand. Who can pass judgment on me? Let him approach me. Look, the Lord God will help me. Who then can declare the guilty? Look, all of them will wear out like a garment. A moth will consume them. Uh, Rhonda? Who among you worships the Lord and listens to the voice of his servant? Anyone who walks in darkness and has no bright light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and let him lean on his side. Watch out, all of you who are lighting fires to arm yourself with coming error. Go ahead, walk by the light of your fires, and by the flaming arrow of your lips. But from my hand you will receive this. You will lie down in the place of sun. Oh. Okay. So. Any reactions to any of that before we get going? Well, some of it's a prophecy about Christ's suffering. Absolutely. Say what? Some of this is a prophecy about Jesus' suffering. Uh -huh. And we'll get to more of that in next week's lesson. So why did God give the gifts he gave to his servant? Sure. What specific, what two gifts are mentioned specifically here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, be the word. Gave me a tongue like the learned, an instructed tongue. That same verse he mentions <laughs> another gift. In that same verse, he mentions another gift. He can listen? Yeah. Isn't it odd to have those two gifts mentioned? This is a servant song. This is a talking about Jesus here. 
when you think of what Jesus could do, I, I, maybe your mind doesn't work the way my mind does, but I am always thinking about the miracles and the great things he accomplished, the deeds. But what two gifts are mentioned here? A tongue, a learned tongue, and a learned ear. Well, we all have tongues, we all have ears. You know when to speak and when to not speak. <laughs> More important than not speaking is listening. Listening. Mm. So, well, one of you talks a lot and one of you listens a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, why do you think those two are singled out? Well, everything Christ has is to do the Father's will, but why these two specific things? So he knows how to sustain the weary with the word? Yeah. The first one is he was given this gift so he could tell people who need it what they needed to hear. He could tell, he could sustain them, build them up, lift them up with a word. He would know the exact right thing to say in the exact right way. How many times have you been, I don't know what to do, and flipped open scripture and somehow the random page you landed on, you start glancing through and hey, that's what I needed right now. Yep. <laughs> Same idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that's a helpful mm -hmm. finding. All right. And you, but you do that sort of thing. And it, it ain't an accident. God speaks through his word and he knows what you need to hear. So that's the tongue. How about uh, the ear? To be able to to understand and, and listen to what God did, is telling us. To listen to his father, absolutely. And also to listen to, um, yeah, to us. Remember, one of the things that gets emphasized time and time again in the epistles is Jesus understands us which sounds trite, I know, but think about that. God understands us. He doesn't just know us. He understands us because he's been there. If, he, if I sat here and tried to tell you all how to go, grow corn, you'd tell me shut up in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? No. I don't know. Oh, oh. We could make money. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You wouldn't respect it. You wouldn't listen to it. Because I don't know what I'm talking about. You put seeds in ground and harvest them when they're growing. <laughs> <laughs> but strategies and all that stuff. And if you guys were trying to tell me how to translate old German books, I probably wouldn't listen too much because <laughs> <laughs> because you I don't understand much about farming I've never really been a farmer I've driven a combine for about what 15 minutes <laughs> but I don't really understand it and when it comes to translating old German books I get that a lot better than you would because I do it. God 
is so far above us, we have zero chance of ever understanding him. But because Christ was here on earth and shared our humanity, he understands us in a way that only someone who experienced it. Exactly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I ask, are you, if I understand, are you saying God educated himself through Jesus? <sighs> Did God educate himself through the birth of Jesus and the life of Jesus? I mean, that's kind of what I'm hearing. Educated might not be the right word, but Jesus familiarize yeah you you <laughs> gained you gain a certain amount of clarity on what someone's going so through you learn that's confusing to me i don't know he sent jesus because he knew the outcome well he, he, uh, go ahead. english is a stupid language <laughs> English is a really stupid language. <laughs> For example, Greek, it, English is a blunt tool. English is a hammer. For example, I can describe the brewer's pizza and my wife using the exact same word. Isn't that stupid? Do you really think I feel the same way about pizza, my wife, and the brewers the exact same way? I love the brewers. I love pizza. I love Caitlin. Those are three entirely different emotions. But we use the same word, right? Mm -hmm. The word no is also a dumb word. Because you can know something because you read it. Or you can know something because you did it. Or you can know something because you've eliminated all the different, all obvious possibilities, so you know. And sometimes what you know, you don't actually know. You think you know, but you're wrong. But we use the same word for all of it. Greek has two words, and frankly, those could use a little bit of shading. Different, if we had more of a precise, if we could use language more precisely, again, this is where everyone being fluent in German would be useful. There's like 30 words for no. Uh, it would be more useful. So God knows us. He knows all things. He has a knowledge of us. Jesus has an experiential knowledge, which is a different sort of knowledge. And yes, he obtained that by being human. He, the human and the divine nature were united in Jesus. How that, how that works is a mystery. It's an article of faith, and we're talking second year of seminary type education. This is a second year of seminary topic right now. This isn't even first year. This is Christology. He lowered himself to be like us. He lowered himself to be like, not just be like us, to be us. He, he, was, he was one of us. So he knows by experience it's easier to talk to someone who's gone through what you're going through Mike, than it is to talk to someone who knows a lot about what you're going through. Mike, think of it this way when we used to box as kids. You have to experience boxing with somebody in a competition to understand the feeling, the fear, the anticipation, the action of all that goes on. And Jesus yeah. done that through all the uh, temptations that right. we go through. Like you guys have boxed competitively. Mm -hmm. I can punch. I can punch reasonably well. I've never so. boxed anybody. What? I would think so. I've never boxed anybody in my life. I last time I threw a punch in anger and had one coming back at me, I was twelve. 
So I I would I want to know I I have a good head knowledge of how boxing works, but I couldn't tell you what it's like climbing in the ring until I experience right. I understand what you're saying, but I hope you understand. I wouldn't say the confusion. Well, if you're not confused by Christology, you're either lying to yourself or you're God. And you try to figure out the Trinity, all you're going to do is run in a circle. Oh, listen, I've many times I'm trying to. And, and I'm trying to speak as precisely as possible without saying too much. Because in these areas where people try to explain too much is where they run into trouble. A lot of the reason we have the creeds we have, most of them exist because they were refuting people who tried to explain the Trinity in one way or another and got themselves into trouble. A reason after that, a lot of the heresies that plague the church had to do with Christology, the nature of Christ, how God could be both human and God at the same time. And how was he human from the beginning, from before humanity was created? Well, no, that's impossible. But that wouldn't argue with God never changing. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. How do you square that? Uh, so when he was, did he just appear human and was actually God? Or was he completely human with a couple of godlike attributes? No, that's not it either. At a certain point, you have the best thing you can do is take all the statements, put them in a pile and say, this is what we know. And we don't know anything else. So this is what we believe, and it's not really up to us to figure out how it makes sense. Which is another place people have gotten into trouble because a lot of the churches, back at the time of the Reformation, there were three uh, main reformers, Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli. Calvin and Z Zwingli agreed on a lot of things especially one thing that is absolutely untrue. Yeah. No, not even that. Free will, that was Aquinas and he's, a, we could have a long discussion. I could go on a long monologue on Aquinas, the meanest thing I ever said to him. Uh, my niece was baptized in a Catholic church and they had a seminary student preach. And after listening to his sermon, I said something to him that was a scathing insult that he took as a compliment. I looked at him and said, you've clearly studied your Aquinas. For me, that I couldn't say a harsher thing to a preacher because Thomas Aquinas is one of my least favorite people in the history of the church. For him as a Catholic seminary student, it's a great compliment because Thomas Aquinas is still considered one of the great thinkers of Catholicism. Anyway, the point is he was the free will guy. Calvin and Zwingli contended that God never revealed anything to us that we couldn't rationally understand. Hmm. And that leads in that leads you down a path that gets pretty unchristian because you start turning God into a human being. And that's where a lot of the you can't baptize a baby because babies can't understand what's being taught comes from that. The Lord's Supper just represents Christ's body and blood, comes from that. A lot of these other things all stem from the thought that God would never reveal something to us that we couldn't rationalize. It's dangerous stuff. That's all the shooties. 
Mm -hmm. Way back in a, what's that? Oh, a crazy Bible, Bible class, class we were in with Daryl and Gwen Shooty. She she claimed that a true Christian person could understand everything about God there was to understand. Uh, and I said, uh, have you ever read Revelation? <laughs> I, <laughs> Act, you want to, you ever read you ever read Genesis? Yeah. <laughs> I I heard it put well by someone whose theology I found to be just awful. Just, he, this was over in China. He was a non-denominational and just as tutti fruity as the world comes. But he said something that I stole because I liked it. I do not want a God who is so small that I can understand him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. That's well put. Mm -hmm. uh, I may be smarter than some, but I ain't as smart as God. <laughs> well, maybe I'm not very smart, but I, I do believe in faith. Mm -hmm. and, and when it comes to Christology, right. what we're talking about here, it's an article of faith. It's something you're not really going to understand. Well, I hope you understand where it's coming from. I do understand. And the reason I couldn't really respond to what you were saying is I couldn't think of anything that would not lead me down a bad path. And I'd rather stammer like an idiot than say something wrong. Well, you did well, though. <laughs> no, you didn't. Well, you know, I, I look at the Alpha and Omega. You know, mm -hmm. God knows from the beginning and end, right? Mm -hmm. So He's already went through this. So, mm -hmm. but I'm not questioning my faith. I just I heard that you, and, you wanted an explanation, and asking for an explanation yeah. is a perfectly except. That's what Bible class is for. I will sit here and I will give you what the Bible says. I'll occasionally give you my opinion yeah. if you think if I think it's applicable. And when we get to marriage like this, I'll say, I don't know. Because no one knows. No one knows. Can you help me out here? What verse was that where uh, it was Paul or one says that we have somebody that can sympathize with us who knows everything? Uh, I believe that was he. He knows all uh, uh, he, he's done everything. How's that go? Hebrews. Hebrews 2, isn't it? Therefore, since the children share flesh and blood, he too shared the same flesh and blood, so that by For this reason, he had to become like his brothers in every way, in order that he would be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God so that he could pay for the sins of the people. Indeed, because he suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. What verse are you on, Pastor? Hebrews 2, 14 through 18. Well, we just read that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Right. The book of Hebrews is just a brilliant exposition on the role and work of Christ because it had to be what you're looking for Mike Hebrews I'm Hebrews is in the back okay uh, Galatians there you go Hebrews 2 14 14 to 18. I just did. Well, sometimes it is. Right. Thanks. Makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. It helps us understand. Okay. Well, anything further on any of that? I love it when our paths take us down. Well, I'm, I'm educating myself. Well, that, that's how education happens. You, if you run into something you don't quite understand, you talk about it till you're as clear as you can be on it. When I'm translating old German books, if there's a word I don't quite understand, I got two. And I'm very excited about this. I just bought myself a third German dictionary, but it's from 1883, which is about the time most of the books I'm translating are from. So I can see how the words were used at, at that time. time. And I'm really excited for that. I got it for a buck. It's high German, low German. Mm -hmm. German. And, yeah, and I'm, this is American German. And it's a special animal. All and so anyway, I'm nerding out over here. <laughs> and it, <sighs> hey, we were watching a movie the other night. It was in German, and it's a thank you. Thank Danke. you. Danke. Is it Danke? Thank you. Danke. Danke. Well, if I if I say thank you or thanks, uh -huh. uh, means roughly the same thing, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you say Danke. That's like saying thanks. Oh, yeah. And dank. Dunk. It was a dank. A, yeah, it was a dank. I thought that was more like a. Well, no, he didn't say dank. He said dunk. Well, there's so many dunks. Well, dink. Dink sound, sounds like it would be spelled D E N D K, which is, would be a German variant of the word to think. Danke is thank you. Denken is to think. So I, I'd have to listen specifically to know if you misheard it or if he was saying something. Yeah, we went back. It's Danke though. We'll see. We'll go right uh, and Anyway. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I. Lots of as, can I take off my pastor hat for a minute? <laughs> Have, have any of you guys seen the movie Inglorious Bastards? Yeah, seen part of it. Yeah. Inglorious Bastards. It's a Quentin Tarantino movie. It came out about 15 years ago. Uh, anyway, the German subtitles on that have almost nothing to do with what the guy's actually saying in German. Okay. If you listen to what he's actually saying in German, it's much funnier. It's some twisted stuff, but it's really funny. Yeah. Uh, I start watching, she made me turn it off. Yeah. I, we were having a movie night. I picked a romantic rom com type movie. Caitlin picked that, not knowing what it was. And, after about 20 minutes, she's like, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, some of that. I did. Some of that stuff is unbelievable. Yeah. That scene when the Jews are hiding underneath the floorboard, it's in that French uh, farmhouse. That, yeah, see, see, I didn't get to that part. Yeah. Oh, it's the first scene of the movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What the sure. what the guy is saying in German has nothing to do with the English subtitles. Yeah, I'll run that back again and see it. <laughs> anyway, if if you speak a little bit of German, you're just like, <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Anyway, why is the servant so confident in verses seven to nine? God will help him. Absolutely. And he has if, if God be for me, who can be against me? That's essentially what he's saying here. Keep faith. Mm -hmm. 
What you just said is kind of interesting. It goes back to our previous discussion. You ever think of Jesus having faith? Faith. If he was human, it's human nature. It's, 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 it's human nature. He had Jesus, to have that. exactly. But it's kind of mind blowing to think about because he had he had he had to have faith in himself. You hear people say all the time, believe in yourself, and that's kind of nonsense. Just like telling kids they can do anything they want to do. Well, well intentioned is a flat out lie. I could want it all I want, but from the age I was four, it was obvious I would never be a ballet star. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, hey, as long as you're on cement, you're fine. <laughs> if I was on cement, I'd be dead. <laughs> Uh, so you, you know what I mean. You, My snow ballet, he's sorry. You, you have, you have the freedom to reach for whatever you want, but you can't always be what you want to be. But Jesus had to believe in himself. If you believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything. No, you can't. Jesus, however, accomplished the the most important thing ever in part by believing in himself which bends my mind to think about honestly how does that affect not not all is that before he was arrested did he not wish that he did not go through this he asked God if there was another, another way. way. Yeah. yeah. And so, if, I mean, that falls in line with this, doesn't yeah. it, to some extent? Well, that was the ultimate act of faith. He knew what yes. was about to happen. And he was asking, look, this is... He didn't... Now I think about that often. He didn't want to do it. Because who would? Yeah. Who would want to suffer what Jesus suffered? God, if there's any other way, please do that. But thy will be done. Yeah. But thy will be done. If there's any other way, let's do the other way. But I will do whatever you know needs to be done. That was the ultimate act of faith. I want it to be different. But if it can't be different, so be it, God. What I thought was interesting in that is in 6, when he submitted his back to those who beat him mm -hmm. and his cheek to those who pulled out his beard and did not hide his face from disgrace and from spit, he was not fighting back because mm -hmm. he knew God would help him. Right. It's pretty much a theme, isn't it? Like Abraham with his son. Mm -hmm. Very... There's a lot of parallels to be drawn between Abraham and Isaac and God. And also, let's not forget about the ram there. The ram is the substitutionary sacrifice. We're getting ahead of ourselves. When we get to Rachel's Genesis uh, study, we'll spend a lot of time on that story. Rachel's Genesis. <laughs> what's, what's that? Genesis. Rachel's Genesis. Well, yeah, I'm going to say. There's a lot to unpack in Genesis. We may not spend a lot of time on creation because I think that's fairly well known. But I think, you know, after the Tower of Babel, there's a lot that's less well known that is worth talking. We'll, we'll cover it, but it probably won't be the, quite this intense because you guys know that already anyway so well, the first two lines of verse 10 are extremely important can you tell me why no what was the question again it's written on your sheet number five because the only way to god is through his servant jesus Ah, yeah, those two lines, as you've mentioned several times when discussing Hebrew poetry, there's a lot of parallelism. This is Hebrew poetry, and the parallels here, 
the Lord and the servant are written in a parallel construction. So they're the same. The servant is clearly identifying oh, okay. himself not only as human yeah. in the rest of it, but also as God. Say that again. I mean, I understand it, but where do you want me to start? The last two sentences. Okay. The servant is identifying himself as human in the first part of this section. Yeah. Uh, it, the descriptions there could only be descriptions of a human, right? But due to the parallel mm -hmm. construction of Hebrew, Hebrew poetry, yeah. the last part of line one and the last part of line two are connected. They are the same. They are, it's like drawing an equal sign in there. And you see that in the next line. Anyone who walks in darkness and has no bright light, parallel construction. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and let him lean on his God, parallel construction. If the final four lines all are the same thing, the first two lines have to be the same thing as well, correct? That's how, that's how <coughs> writing works. Yeah. Do you see what I mean there? Or... Okay. I'm get I get excited about things sometimes. So if I'm not being clear, speak up. Except for Rhonda, she's talking too much tonight. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Rhonda. Yeah. I hope you can duct tape. So um the last part when it says, but from my hand you will receive this, you will lie down in a place of time. We're not on verse eleven yet. Oh, verse 11. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, yeah. I thought you meant that. You no, know, I'm talking 10. about verse 10. Oh, oh, the verse the last 10. two in verse 10, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. I get you. I get it. The first two in verse 10, the second two in verse 10, and the third two in verse 10 okay. are all parallel construction. Okay. So. And, and uh, the par well, we may as well go there since we're there. If you look at verse 11, it's another series of parallel constructions. Watch out, all of you who are lighting fires, sharm yourself with flaming arrows. Go ahead and walk by the light of your fires and by the flaming arrows you lit. Same idea carrying through again. But from my hand, you will receive this. You will lie down in a place of torment. The last two lines break down the parallel construction to make a point it by breaking the pattern it makes the final thing stand out even more i think verse 11 is harder to understand well we're going to talk about it that's the last question on your sheet oh thank you I'd say it goes farther than that. I think it's people that go against God's word and and uh, actually try to sabotage God's word. Yeah, because if you heard me, it because uh, the Bible is not opposed to saying, "Do not rely on your own strength. Do not rely on princes. Do not." rely on things like that. They're mortals. They're not going to help you. <clears throat> Lighting fires, setting up flaming arrows is a more aggressive stance than just trusting in yourself, right? It's more aggressive. It shows you're going to attack. You don't set an arrow on fire and not shoot it. Yeah, just to arm yourself. Yeah. And God says, go ahead, try, try, fight against me. See what's going to happen. Actually, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to lie down in a place of torment. It's amazing to me. I never, ever would have thought of that. 
Well, there's a reason Bible class with me takes forever. I love pulling these things apart a little bit. Well, so wait quite a, a bit. How are you going to answer number six then? I mean, I, I guess I lost something in there. Uh, well, number, we moved, we dug a no. little deeper than number six than the question is worded. The flaming arrows and the fire signify exactly what you said. Okay. okay. People who are attacking, yeah. sabotaging, uh, yeah. fighting against the servant, against God. But the last two lines, uh, well, as we try to, but from the hand you receive this, you will lie down. To, so the people that are shooting the arrows and the flames or they will receive their rewards. Yeah. Such as they are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, the pronouns are important. All of you who are lighting fires, who all of you who are yeah. uh, saying up flaming arrows, you, but from my hand, you will receive this torment. Clear? Well, does it go to, to self too? <laughs> if we try to work things out without God. Well, that really that's accurate, but I don't think that's the precise warning that what what you're saying is true, but I don't think that's in here as much as it is in other places. Uh, okay, this this is uh, fighting people who are. This is talk, addressing people who fight against God's word. To bring it back to what we were talking about earlier, there's a lot of people around who actively fight against God's word. Uh, or as uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, in the later days there will be many men who cannot stand sound teaching, but will seek teachers who tell them what their itching ears want to hear. There's plenty of that around right now. They're fighting against God's word and replace. If I see one more pastor retweet Joel Olstein, I think I'm going to vomit. <laughs> Have you, you were talking about movies before. Have you ever heard of this horrible movie called The First Year? It's Don't kind believe of a, I have. It's a spoof on Mocking the Bible. Yeah. creationism. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a horrible thing. The grandkids turned it on. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't a very popular grandma because I said, this is, this is sacrilege. Yeah, <laughs> they said, it's just a movie. Good. And I said, it's awful. Um, That's the sound of my yeah. A comedy or was it serious? Well, it was supposed yeah. to be a comedy, and and in in the oh, I mean, not a funny comedy. It was comedy, kind of it? funny. It was kind of a caveman thing. Mm -hmm. It was funny, and then it just got, besides being grossly filthy, it just made fun of uh, Cain and Abel and uh, Moses and not Moses, uh, Abraham, and it uh, it just got worse all the time. Finally, they shut it off. You know, in a lot of the movies, they use God's name when they're swearing, and that just offends me mm -hmm. so horribly. Mm -hmm. But I hear swearing, and that is just kind of like, I, it's something that I've grown accustomed to, that I have God's name used in it. I find yeah. that so offensive. Mm -hmm. But I guess I'll... Uh, yeah, well, this, uh, the, this movie, uh, it, was, uh, it was made well enough that whoever made the crappy thing new mm -hmm. creation and you know the first five books of the bible and i thought boy this guy's yeah, boy, asking yeah. for what makes money didn't hell it? yeah that was also they didn't make, they didn't really make very much money on it thank goodness <laughs> he's also what man Oh, they just blatantly mocked oh, my. The, the word. I mean, they had to. See, I can't stand. They had to read Genesis to be able to make this movie I, the way they did. I must and be pretty shallow mocked. because I, if I see that a show, I turn it off. You just can't. Yeah. I should be able to be strong if. Yeah, no, I know. Just disgust no, me enough. No, don't don't worry about it. I can handle well done satire. 
I, oh, yeah. I can I can handle stuff like that. If if there's a certain amount of intelligence put into a critique, it's not something I would ever encourage any of you to watch. But if you distill down a lot of South Park episodes, at least when it was on <laughs> when I was in college, yeah. a lot of their social critique is absolutely brilliant. You bet it is. It's just wrapped in filth and raunchiness. But if you're watching it and you can filter it a little bit, you're going, these guys are geniuses. Well, we but, are, we want to kind of make it well, right. Yeah, I, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. But that's yeah. what I mean by a well done see, satire. You see, I, I see it. I don't watch a show I used to mm -hmm. a little bit because there's nothing else on. Right. And I could see the satire, and mm -hmm. they were open. They attacked everything. Yeah. It, nothing, was, nothing is sacred. Yeah. And, and it would. The, but the points they were making were well, yeah. intelligent points, and I could, I could handle that because it was well done. But a lot of these spoof movies, like you're talking about, there's no art to it. Even it's just like it's mm -hmm. I, I, I can appreciate a point of view if it's intelligently put, even if I don't like what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But when there's not even a brain cell to share between any of the writers. Well, see, I, I guess I like, if you're talking about flicks, I kind of like uh, magical. Mm -hmm. type of, she thinks it's anti religious. Well, some of it. Can I, uh, yeah, some of it I just uh, can't. Yeah, she never watched. Well, no. It's not anyway, she turns the TV off on me. <laughs> no, no, a lot of times uh, he'll watch something that he likes more of the action flicks. Uh, watch a lot of that, but that's why you know, I have. I like that. <laughs> no, he can't watch that. <laughs> what can I say? That's uh, why I have a man cave. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have my TV set, but she has to turn mine off. I watch the old cowboy show. Yeah, you're on your shop. That <laughs> night, <laughs> Henry Graham will have the cowboy movie. Yeah, she likes it, I like it. Yeah, I like yeah. it. The reason we like it is that you don't have to be able to hear and understand what's going on. The guy in black's the bad guy, the guy in white's the good guy. As long as, as long as there's a horse in it, I like it. And then he'll go, okay, Caitlin. Go, what did they say? <laughs> Can't you guys turn on the closed caption on your TV? I can't keep up with that. <laughs> you know what? I rely on Honestly, that. that's how I learned that's how I learned to read Chinese. Oh, yeah, because what they do is they'd have Chinese subtitles on English television shows. So if we're watching an episode of Friends or something, there would be Chinese written while Joey and them are talking. And so I would be reading that and I'd know how to say something in Chinese, but I wouldn't know how to write it. But I'm reading the subtitles and I hear, I'm sorry, which I know is Dwe Bu Chi. So Dwe Bu, I bet that's Chi. And I'd figure out to read the characters by watching the subtitles on shows I already knew. Anyway, Myron's hearing aids is going on him, so shall we close? <laughs> Dear God, we thank you that you have sent your servant, your son to us, Jesus Christ, who has the tongue instructed to give us what we need to hear and the ear to hear what we need to tell him. We ask that we cling ever more confidently to him so that we may receive the reward he won for us, eternal life with you in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Goodbye, ladies. Thanks for joining us.